Ladies and gentlemen, we're very excited to present our first international guest. From his academic home at the Paris School of Economics, he takes a historical and statistical approach to show why some stay rich while others can't seem to break the cycle of poverty. He's professor of economics at the School for Advanced Studies in the Social Sciences and author of the best-selling book Capital in the 21st Century from 2013. His latest book, Capital and Ideology, was published in 2019 and has a global scope, focusing on how wealth is accumulated and inequality disseminated in different societies around the world. He's not here to talk about personal wealth and inheritance, as some would expect. His talk today is on development aid, carbon emissions and rising inequality. Professor Thomas Piketty, we are all ears. Hello, and, and thank you. Thanks a lot for your invitation. Uh, so, sorry, you know, I would love to be in, uh, with you. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm afraid I am in my office in, in Paris. So let me actually try to uh, share uh, my screen. Uh, I, and I hope this is... Um, uh, you can see you can see this now. So you know, in in this talk, I actually I am going to talk also about inequality because I think this is very important uh, when we talk about carbon emissions and when we talk uh, talk about development aid. So what I'm going to do in this pre short presentation is basically two things. You know, first I'm going to show you some new evidence on income, wealth, but also gender and carbon inequality coming from the new uh, world inequality database and the brand new World Inequality Report 2022, which was just published a few weeks ago. And, you know, this comes from a very collective uh, uh, project involving over 100 researchers from all over the world. And, and this is, you know, something on which we, we have put a lot of energy developing this uh, capacity, uh, and, and, and which is a sort of a way to observe the world through the lenses of, of inequality. And then I will talk uh, about the consequences for development aid to, to summarize, you know, the big message of this presentation, you know, I think the magnitude of global inequality and in particular of negative climate externalities, uh, 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 you know, imposed by the richest uh, 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 economic actors uh, on this planet, you know, implies that in a way we need to go beyond standard development aid and and confront inequality in an in a, in a even more ambitious uh, manner. And so, I, you know, I just throw uh, on the table, you know, one, one simple proposal. But, you know, what about sharing at least a fraction of global tax revenues uh, paid by the world's most powerful economic actors, typically multinationals, billionaires, between all countries uh, according to uh, population? You know, we've been talking a lot about uh, international tax reform in 2021, but by and large, uh, countries in the South were, uh, you know, completely uh, uh, forgotten from this discussion. So let me start with point one about the new evidence about rising inequality. So, you know, I'm going to show you some data from the World Inequality Database. You can go online to the World Inequality Database website to, to get uh, more, uh, more details. Uh, let, let me start with this simple uh, map of the world uh, showing you, you know, the share of total income uh, going to the top uh, 10 percent uh, uh, of the citizen of each country. So if we had complete equality, the top 10 percent should get 10 percent of total income. If we had complete inequality, they should get 100 percent. So in practice, of course, the world is in between the two, in between 10 and 100 percent. But what I want to argue here, what I want to show you is that there's a lot of variation. So, you know, basically it goes from 20, 25, 30 percent in Europe to as much as 65 or almost 70 percent uh, in a country like South Africa. So, you know, it doesn't go from 10 to 100, but it goes from 20 to 70. So it's enormous variation. So inequality matters. And it's even more spectacular when you look at the uh, bottom 50 percent share, which in a way, you know, is even more important. And here you can see that it goes from, uh, so, you know, if we had complete equality, the bottom 50 percent should get 50% of total income. Uh, if we had complete inequality, they should get zero. 
So in practice, of course, it's always between the two again, but it goes from as little as 5% in a country like uh, uh, South Africa to 25%, you know, in some European uh, countries. So it, it varies from a factor of 1 to 5, you know, from 5 to 25%, which implies that, you know, for a given average income for a given per capita GDP in a given country, the average income of the bottom 50% can vary from a factor of one to five. So again, you know, the big lesson is that uh, the distribution of income matters a lot. And if you only care about aggregate GDP and economic growth, etc., you know, you forget about the environment, of course, but you also forget about what really matters for the you know bottom 50% of the of the population. Now, this is a data on income inequality that we have developed over the year in the World Inequality Database. Recently, we've been publishing this World Inequality Report, extending our uh, uh, work uh, looking at wealth, uh, gender inequality, and and maybe even more importantly, carbon emissions, which I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get at to conclude this uh, presentation. So first of all, regarding the concentration of wealth or you know capital ownership, including uh, you know real estate, uh, business wealth, uh, financial assets, you know everything that uh, household can own uh, around the world. Here, the big message is that, you know, the concentration of capital ownership is always a lot more extreme uh, than, than uh, income inequality. This is particularly extreme in developing countries. So if you look in sub-Saharan uh, Africa or, you know, in Latin America, which is a very unequal region, uh, the bottom 50% owns only 1% of total wealth. So, you know, this is extremely small. Now, in Europe, you know, which is, again, the most equal country, the most equal region of the world, uh, 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 you know, the, the bottom 50% owns uh, 4% of total wealth. So, you know, this is better than 1%, of course, but, you know, it is still very small. And even in a country like Norway or, you know, France, it will be typically less than 5%. So, here, you know, this means that the inequality in economic opportunities and the possibility to participate to the economy, because the, the ownership of wealth is also, you know, the opportunity to create a business, to to own your home, well, to uh, put your family in a home. Uh, you know, this is really your capacity to act on your own life. You know, th this is extremely unequally distributed, particularly in, in developing countries. Another novelty about, uh, you know, our inequality perspective in the World Inequality Report uh, 2022 is this new perspective on, on gender inequality. You know, sometimes we look at gender inequality uh, uh, for a given job, for a given occupation, and we say, oh, okay, women earn... 10% or 20% less than men for this given job and occupation. But, of course, in practice, one of the main problems is that women don't have access to the same job and occupation. And if you take the share of women in total labor income, in fact, you know, it's 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 pretty small, you know, pretty much everywhere. You can see on these graphs that all regions in the world, you know, are pretty far from gender parity. And, and uh, even, you know, in, in Europe, in Western Europe, you know, it is at the, comparable to the level of, of China, which, interestingly enough, it has been actually going down in, in recent uh, decades. That's partly because the increase of the share going to the top of the distribution, uh, uh, because most people at the top are actually men, uh, has this kind of, uh, of paradoxical effect on the, on the time trend. Anyway, the, you know, the big message here again is that the indicators that we use to measure uh, what we do are very important because, you know, this can, you know, give us a different perspective. Let me conclude with, with what I view as sort of probably the most important indicator uh, if we want to talk about uh, development aid, uh, inequality at the global level, which is a very high uh, level of uh, uh, concentration of carbon emissions. So, that's one of the big novelties in this World Inequality Report 2022. We are able for all regions of the world, all countries in the world, to decompose you know, the level of carbon emissions uh, for the different groups in the distribution. And we, you know, we already knew that, of course, carbon emissions at the global level are very unequally distributed. So typically, you know, countries in the north you know, emit a lot of carbon and countries in the south are going to suffer from this carbon emission. What we show here is that within each country 
And within each region of the world, we also have enormous inequality. So, you know, here you see in, in, in Europe, if you look at the bottom 50% of the population, uh, the average carbon emission is about five uh, tons of carbon, which is, I mean, still too much. This has to be reduced, but, you know, this is sort of more or less in line with the ob European objective for 2030 or 2040. Now, the problem is that the top 10% emit uh, 29 tons of carbon, and if you were to look at the top 1%, uh, even in Europe, it would be over 70 tons of, of carbon, which is the level that you see in North America already for the for the top 10%. And, and, you know, this is the same in all regions of the world. You know, look at South and Southeast Asia, for instance. So what's the, the bottom line? You know, the bottom line is that if we design solution to fight a, a global warming and you know also to organize development aid where we treat everybody in the same manner and for instance we have proportional carbon tax in order to reduce everybody by the same proportion you know we we, we are missing a big part of the reality and also maybe we're going to have a big a problem, you know, convincing people in the bottom 50 percent that they need to make the same proportional effort than people in the top 10 percent. So, general conclusion: we have to take inequality uh, very seriously uh, if we want to, uh, you know, uh, fight, uh, you know, the, the biggest uh, challenges we have to uh, confront in the world today, which, in my view, are rising inequality and 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 global warming. We need probably to, you know, to think beyond standard development aid. Uh, you know, when we talk about international tax reform, the taxation of multinationals, you know, we should take the right of all countries to development and the right of all countries to access, uh, uh, you know, tax base, a tax resource on a sustainable basis. We should take these rights seriously. Otherwise, uh, you know, we are going to, to face a, a bigger and bigger uh, uh, problem and, in, you know, in some case, uh, violence uh, and, and major difficulties to, to you know, to, to meet uh, our uh, global sustainable development goal objective. Thanks a lot for your attention. And thank you so much, Professor. That was really food for thought and it provided a great backdrop for the upcoming panel.